Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. Also, shout out to my viewer Wajid for uh, requesting to hear about this topic. Um, Wajid, if you're watching this, um, you're awesome and thanks for watching my videos. Um, okay, so this is going to be a lesson about how to implement the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo method in MATLAB and um, also how to use this method to estimate uh, the parameters um, for an ODE model and how to fit those parameters to a data set. Um, okay, so before we get into the actual code, I'm just going to quickly remind you guys about um, the logistic growth model. I'm going to be using this OD model um, as an example for this video, but if you want to hear more about this model, I'll, I'll actually link a video I did um, like going more in depth on it. But for now, I'm just going to be using this as an example of an OD model that we could be um, fitting to data. So this is a model of um, growth in cell populations or really not even just cell populations, but like any populations, could even be like animals or, or humans. But we'll just, we'll just talk about cells for now to keep it simple. So it's a model of um, population growth where the population like starts off growing um, at like a close to exponential rate, but then as it approaches a carrying capacity, the growth slows down until it like flattens out around um, the carrying capacity. So the model has two parameters. So there's a uh, growth rate R and a carrying capacity K. Those are the two um, parameters to the model. And then we just call our variable X. So X could be like the number of cells or the number of like people or animals or whatever, whatever population you're trying to model. But again, we'll just, we'll just talk about cells for now. Um, so yeah, pretty simple model. Um, I'll kind of draw what it, what it ends up looking like. So if you start off um, with like one cell, it kind of starts growing like almost exponentially and then it like flattens out around this carrying capacity K. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, yeah, just pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So the challenge for this video, what we're going to use this uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo method for is to... Um, is to fit this ODE model to some uh, some like actual data set. So basically, I'm going to be giving you guys like like a noisy data set that maybe kind of looks like some kind of like um, simulated like noisy data set. Um, and I actually produced this data set by running a stochastic simulation um, in Python. So at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys what parameters for R and K I actually use to generate this um, like fake data set. Um, but that's going to be at the end of the video. So what we're going to do before then is we're going to try to use this Markov, Markov chain Monte Carlo method to um, fit the parameters to the data and uh, estimate these parameters. That's going to be kind of the goal for this video. Um, okay, so let's uh, get into the code now. Um, okay, guys. So this is this is like the fake data set that we're going to be trying to uh, fit fit our ODE model to. So again, I kind of just produced this set um, this data set by doing a stochastic simulation in Python, and I, I chose some like R and K parameters to use for this. And at the end, I'll show you guys um, what the actual parameters I used were. But for now, we're just going to try to fit this ODE model to the data. And just to remind you guys again, like the purpose of parameter estimation is to try to find the values of R and K that allow this model to most closely fit the data set we have. So, um, yeah, this is what the data looks like. Um, if, if we're like, if we want to kind of like cheat and take the easy way out here, we can kind of already see like what the carrying capacity is, but let's not, let's not do it visually. Let's try to actually like write this, uh, write this Markov chain Monte Carlo method properly um, and see if, see if it can figure out the parameters itself rather than just kind of looking visually at uh, what the carrying capacity is. But yeah, so this is what the data looks like. Um, I also have it in CSV format here. Uh, like usual, I'll, I'll put this all up on my GitHub if you guys want to download it and try it out yourself. Um, yeah, so just the CSV format, it has it has a column for the time point, and it has a column for the cell count at that time point. And we're kind of assuming here that there's some like experimental and uh, and like biological noise here. So there could be like measurement error as well as like cells growing, cells dying off. Um, and you know, just just some noisiness in the data. 
But yeah, so we want to use this uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo method to um, search through the parameter space and try to figure out which values of R and K cause um, this OD to best fit the data. Um, okay, and we're going to be using uh, MATLAB for this. And the reason I'm using MATLAB here is just because that's that's what the request was. Um, one of my viewers wanted to see uh, how to do this in MATLAB. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of MATLAB, and if if I was doing this myself, I would probably use Python. But I, I recognize that people, especially in academia, a lot of people do use MATLAB, so it is good to. Uh, I think it is good to be like making some like tutorials on MATLAB too, just because I know people use it. But um, disclaimer for this video. So in order to in order to do all the stuff I'm going to do in this video. Um, you need to not only have MATLAB, but you need to have the uh, statistics and machine learning toolbox installed. So if, if you don't have that installed, you're going you're gonna to need that to be able to do um, all the stuff in this video. Um, yeah, again, that's kind of one of the things I don't like about MATLAB. It's like you need to you need to pay for these like extra things to be able to do a lot of the like basic stuff that you could do for free for free in another language. But um, yeah, I mean, that's. That's just how it is, I guess. Um, okay, so just like first things first, let's just read in the data and just make sure we can get the data in, okay? So to do this, I'm just gonna make this section, um, yeah, let's call this read in uh, CSV data. Um, I'll just call it uh, maybe something like, like an abbreviation for experimental data, um, CSV read, uh, and then this this file so cell count data dot csv and this has a um, this has a heading so we want to we want to we want to let this the, the function know that there's a uh, the first row is a heading so to basically skip over the first row um, so I'm, I'm going to put a one here and then a zero because we're not we don't have like a column index. Um, okay, and we're, we're basically just going to see if we can read this in and then plot it and just like make sure we can like recreate this uh, something like this plot we have here. I just want to try to like plot out this uh, plot out this data and make sure we can you know read it in read it in properly. So I'm going to plot um, x data uh, again. The first the first column is the time points. So we're going to plot all all of the rows in the uh, Whoops, I have this backwards. All of the rows in the first column, that's the time points. And then all of the rows in the second column, uh, that's the actual cell counts. So yeah, let's just run this and see if we can just like read this data in and plot it properly. Whoops, forgot. Uh, Some call in there. Um, yeah, looks like it uh, looks like it read in okay and plotted okay. Um, yes, yeah, so we're good. Uh, we're good so far. So I'm just going to comment this out and then we'll, um, we'll proceed on. See so again, this, I don't want to make this into like a big complaining about MATLAB video, but you can even see just watching this, like it's, it feels it's, it's slow and like laggy and I don't know. I don't want to make this into like a negative video about MATLAB, but, but yeah, I'll just, Okay, I'll just keep my opinions to myself for now. <laughs> um, okay, but now that we've read in the data, the, the next part is going to be actually um, coding this uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo method. So basically, like the Markov chain Monte Carlo method is, it's a way of searching around, um, it's a way of like searching around a uh, parameter space that corresponds to a probability distribution. Um, so basically, like if you guys have watched any of my like previous like, parameter estimation and machine learning videos, like normally we have some kind of loss function that we're trying to minimize that like measures how far off the model is from the data. And we want to like minimize that loss function. Um, with Markov chain Monte Carlo, it's kind of the opposite. We're actually going to have a um, log likelihood function that is going to measure um, how basically, basically how likely we would be to observe the data if some if some given parameter set was actually the true underlying parameter set, so it basically measures like the goodness of fit of a parameter set um, to the data, 
And so instead of like minimizing a loss function, um, like, like we would do for like least squares or something like that, we're actually going to be trying to maximize a, um, a log likelihood function. Um, and basically the, the Markov chain Monte Carlo method is just a way of like searching around the parameter space and an advantage to it is that it lets us incorporate um, some prior distribution we have about the parameters. So in this video, I'm gonna be assuming like a worst case scenario where we don't have any like prior information about the parameters, but um, you're, you guys are gonna see that we're gonna be like generating the guesses based on a prior distribution. So if you did have some prior information about what you thought the parameters might be, you could incorporate that prior information um, into this, into this uh, algorithm and then like search through the parameters in a way that like incorporates that prior information. And the goal here is to get a uh, posterior distribution. So if you guys are familiar at all with like Bayesian statistics, you have a you have a prior distribution and then you like incorporate some information from some data and then you come out with a posterior distribution that includes that uh, new information you got from the data. So that's, that's gonna be what we're trying to do here is just like have a prior distribution for the parameters and then um, incorporate our information from our data and then come out with a posterior distribution of like what we think the parameters are. Um, okay, so let's get started uh, writing this code. Um, oh, actually, yeah, sorry. Before we even get into the, um, the actual writing the, uh, writing the um, MCMC, we need to define some functions we're gonna be using first to be able to even like write the rest of it. So I'm actually gonna be a little bit lazy here and just copy and paste in some of these functions, but then I'll, then I'll tell you, um, I'm gonna tell you guys like what, what they're all doing. But yeah, just in order to save time, I'm gonna be a little bit lazy and just copy and paste some of these in. Yeah, just call this like functions to use. So the first function is just gonna be um, the function that is gonna be our ODE model. And we're gonna use this to um, like simulate the ODE using um, various parameter sets. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just calling this function sim for now. It's just gonna be like our ODE simulation. It's gonna take X, which is gonna, I mean, in this case, we only have one variable, but if it, like X will actually be like an array. And if you if you had more than one variable, you could um, store like all the variables in this X array and kind of unpack them. But for here, I only actually have the one variable um, capital X. So I'm really only unpacking this one variable here. Um, and then we're gonna have this this other array, I'm just calling theta, that's just kind of a convention. You could call it whatever, call it params, call it, uh, you know, call it whatever you want, but I'm just calling it theta for kind of a convention. Um, theta is gonna be, um, is gonna what's, be what's gonna pass in all of our parameter values. So I'm just gonna pass in these parameter values for r and then k, just kind of like unpack them out of this um, theta array here. And then I'm just gonna calculate um, this value for dx dt which is gonna be r times x times one minus um, x over the carrying capacity. Again, just our, our ODE here. And then um, and then just gonna return that out of this function. Basically, this function is just gonna be what's, what's gonna allow us to um, simulate this ODE uh, for different, um, different parameter sets we're gonna be passing in. And just remember, just remind you guys again, the goal is to like try out different parameter sets and then try to see which one produces results that most closely match the real data. So yeah, that's our first function we're gonna be using. Um, again, gonna be a bit lazy and also copy and paste in the second function, um, second function here. So this function I'm calling data gen, and this is basically just um, like passing in some time points um, and passing in a parameter set, again, calling the parameter set data. So basically you just pass in some time points, pass in some parameters, and then you just simulate the ODE. You, you call this sim, uh, this sim function here and use the ODE um, 23S solver, uh, built, in, built in MATLAB solver here. Um, you basically just uh, solve the ODEs at these time points for this parameter set. Oh, and the initial condition too is just gonna be starting with one cell. I'm just getting that initial condition because at, at time zero we have um, one cell that we're starting with. So that this, uh, yeah, this here is just the initial condition of starting with one cell. Um, yeah, so basically you just pass in the time points you want, you pass in the parameter set you wanna use, and then you solve the ODEs for that parameter set at those time points. And then you're just returning the time points and the cell counts that you um, solve, 
you, you got by solving the ODs. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, we just have our OD function and then this other function that, um, that solves the ODs for some time points and some parameters. Um, okay, so there's one more function we need and this one is gonna be um, a little bit more complicated but still, uh, still not too bad. So this is gonna be our log likelihood function. Um, and again, just gonna be a little bit lazy and um, copy and paste this in. So yeah, basically our log likelihood function is a measure of, um, it's, basically, it's basically a measure of the likelihood of um, obser observing, observing the real data given that the underlying parameters that, that we've picked for this test parameter set are actually the truth. Like given those parameters, what's the likelihood of observing this um, real data set? And so it's basically like, if you don't want to think too much about the probability, just think of it as like a goodness of fit score. It just matters like, uh, I mean, sorry, just, it just measures like how good of a fit our, um, our chosen parameter set is to the data. So basically you just, you, you just pass in the real data and you pass in a parameter set. And then the first thing it does is it calls this data gen function and it just, um, it basically just like, it just solves the ODEs at the time points of the real data for this parameter set you're passing in. Again, just calling it theta for convention here. And you, you generate this like test data set, just solving, um, solving the ODE for this parameter set at these time points. Again, just the, the first column of the data um, is, the, is the time points. Uh, just to remind you guys here, first column is the time points. So yeah, just just generating a test data set, basically just saying like, what does the OD predict? Like, yeah, just what does the OD predict for the cell counts given some time points and given some uh, some parameters we're passing in? And then, okay, this part is the part that's kind of confusing, but it's really not so bad if you kind of like go through it step by step. So basically, this is just this is just computing the log likelihood score that's just measuring how how closely our test data matches our real data. Um, and again, just this is basically just a measurement of how closely the parameters that are used to generate the test data match our real data. Um, yeah, so basically this, this is using the PDF um, uh, of the normal distribution and just like getting the, getting the PDF score Getting some p-value here of um, of like for each one of the real each one of the real cell counts at each time point. Um, just getting getting the p-value of of observing um, something at least as extreme as that um, real cell count, uh, and like what that p-value would be if the mean of this normal distribution was the ODE predicted um, cell count at that time point for that parameter set with a standard deviation of, I just said a thousand for here. This is kind of like a bit of a shortcut on the theory because for one thing, um, I'm just assuming a normal distribution here. We don't actually know if, if this really does follow a normal distribution. So this is a bit of a shortcut with uh, the theory of this. Um, so this part isn't, it's not a hundred percent airtight from like a, from like a probability theory standpoint, I am taking some shortcuts. I'm just assuming a probability distribution and assuming, um, standard deviation of, um, of a thousand. You guys could play around with this, try out different, uh, try out different distributions, try out different standard deviations. The important thing is that you're using the mean of the distribution. Like the mean should be, um, the predicted, cell count that the ODE predicted given um, given the uh, the parameter set we passed in. That should be the mean. And then the um, the test data point that we're trying to generate a, a p-value for is the real um, data, like the, the real cell count at that time point. So again, this might be a little bit confusing, but um, basically it's just like for each for each data point we have, we're just trying to get some p-value of observing that data point or something at least as extreme as that data point. If we assume like a normal distribution um, with the mean of the um, OD predicted cell count and a standard deviation of a thousand. So this is giving us like a, a column vector here because we're getting one p-value 
um, for each data point we have. So the next thing to do is, um, if you wanted to combine all these p-values, you would have to like multiply them all together. But that's, that's not going to be computationally feasible because that will give us too small of a number. So what we want to actually do is instead of like multiplying them all together, we want to take um, the natural log of all of them. We want to just take the natural log of uh, all of these p-values. And that's, wh that's why we're calling it a log likelihood score instead of just a likelihood score. We take the natural log um, of all of these, uh, of all of these um, individual p-values and then we sum up all of those logs. So basically, this is just going to be summing up a bunch of um, negative numbers. And basically, the, the more negative the number is um, that we end up with, the worse a fit our, our parameter choice was. And the, uh, the closer to zero this log likelihood score is, meaning the less negative it is or the higher it is, that, that means it's a better fit. So basically, this is going to be some like some negative number, and we want it to be as um, close to zero as possible. Basically, we want it to be as like as uh, as high as as close to being positive as possible. And the lower it is, the more negative it is, the worse of a fit it is. So yeah, th these are the functions we need. Um, again, th maybe this part is confusing. Um, and again, I, I acknowledge that I'm taking some like shortcuts on the theory here, just assume, assuming a normal distribution and assuming some standard deviation just to make the make the calculations work. Um, my philosophy is that it's so it's okay to take shortcuts like to the extent that you still end up with the right answer. So like my way of thinking about this is that as long as we still end up getting the right um, parameters in the end, as long as this actually works and we get the correct parameters that actually were used to generate the data, then it's okay to be taking these shortcuts. But again, if you're if you're trying to write like some kind of like math theory paper, you might want to be like more rigorous about like choosing the actual like proper distribution and like proper um, standard deviation and stuff like that. Um, okay, so we're going to be using like all three of these functions uh, to actually to actually uh, write this uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo method. So again, this is basically a way of like exploring around the parameter space that is going to um, choose parameter guesses from some prior distribution of the parameters that we um, that we set. Um, it's basically going to be like like evaluating this log likelihood score at a bunch of different guesses and trying to generate some kind of like posterior distribution uh, based on um, based on some like maximization of these um, log likelihood uh, scores. Um, okay, so let's try to actually like get into writing this um, MCMC method now. So the first thing we're gonna do is just come up with a first guess for the parameters. So I'm just gonna make a comment here, just call this um, first guess for params. Um, I'm just gonna call it maybe, sorry, params, params zero, just like the, the first guess for the params. Again, we could kind of cheat. We could like look at the data and kind of already make a guess for what the carrying capacity is. But let's not let's not take the easy way out. Let's let's try to actually like give this algorithm a bit of a challenge and not just take the obvious guess. So let's actually um, let's just guess one for the growth rate. The growth rate R. Um, we'll just guess one. Sorry, uh, semicolon here, and then we'll guess a um, hundred for the carrying capacity. Again, yeah, we can, we can see that realistically it's not going to be 100, but I'm just kind of, I'm throwing in the guess that I already know is kind of wrong, just because I, I want you guys to see that the algorithm can actually get it right, even if our first guess is is not actually correct. It, it will actually, like, solve for uh, the correct value. Um, okay, so then, uh, based on this first parameter guess, we're going to um, compute a, a first log likelihood score. So, um log likelihood, first log likelihood. Uh, I'll call this LL init um, equals, uh, what I call this again? Oh yeah, LL function. Sorry, forgetting what I call things here. LL function, um, we're gonna pass in our experimental data. Remember that we write in from the CSV, whoops. Experimental data, uh, pass that in for the first argument, and then pass in the params, um, our first guess for the params. 
Um, oh yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting. You need uh, MATLAB. You need the you need the semicolons. Otherwise, it'll just um, print all these lines. Yeah, I get I get spoiled using Python. I'm not used to like writing these semicolons at the end of lines. But yeah, MATLAB. I guess you, you kind of have to do it. Otherwise, it'll just print everything. Um, okay, so we have our first guess for the params, first guess for the log likelihood. And then basically what we want to do next is we want to define some arrays to like keep track of everything. So I'm just going to say for a comment, um, keeping tr track of params and um, log likelihoods. Um, so I'm just going to call this like para set for the param set. It's going to be some like empty array here. And then um, we're basically just going to, like this is just some fancy notation, but we're basically just going to be appending to the uh, para set. It's going to be appending our first guess for the params. So yeah, this is just defining some like empty array here. And then this this line is basically just appending, appending this param guess to the para set. Um, yeah, basically just, just adding it on to this array. Um, that's just kind of the, the notation for that. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing for the, uh, for the, like the log likelihood, um, log likelihood, uh, all, all of our log likelihoods. I'm just going to call this the, uh, likelihood set. Actually, maybe, yeah, maybe just to be precise, I'll just call it, um, call it the log likelihood set. Um, yeah, just... Start this off as a uh, empty array, um, and then you know just copy and paste this log likelihood set uh, equals. Um, it's going to be appending our initialized uh, first log likelihood. Yeah, again, just don't get too confused about the notation here. This is just appending. This is just appending our first log likelihood log likelihood to this um, log likelihood uh, uh, empty array that we have. And then, so the last thing to keep track of is going to be um, all of the guesses, uh, because basically the way this algorithm is going to work is that some of our parameter guesses we're going to accept and save, and then some of them we're going to reject. But even the ones we reject, we want to still keep track of them. So we're just going to have some uh, empty array called all guesses. It's going to keep track of like all the parameter guesses, whether we accept them or reject them. Since we'll say all guesses, again, same notation here. We're just appending, um, we're just appending our first parameter guess. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, these are just like three, three arrays to keep track of things. We're going to be keeping track of the parameters that we accept. We're going to be keeping track of their log likelihood scores. And we're going to be keeping track of like all of the parameter guesses, even the ones that we reject. Um, Okay. So now we just need to like, we're gonna be basically just like doing a bunch of random guesses and we're gonna put all of this inside of a for loop. So we just need to set some some amount of times we want the for loop to um, run. So I'm just gonna call this like run, whoops, sorry, run uh, num, just the number of times we're running it. I'll just make this like a million for now. You guys could make it like more or less uh, depending on like in a real life situation, you'd probably want to have it be kind of a lot, like maybe even more than a million. But for now, I'll just make it a million just so that we can uh, get to run and kind of test things out. And then we're going to say for i equals i equals the range 2 to our uh, run num. And we're starting at 2 because like the first one we already just kind of did out here. Like our, our first parameter guess and our first log likelihood score, we already just, just did. So we're starting with actually the second the second guess, so that's where we're starting with two here and then going up uh, to the range um, run them. It's gonna end this for loop. And then something I like to do when I'm doing these like huge for loops is I like to just keep track of the progress. So I'm going to um, just put in something here, just keep track of the progress um, and like see what percent completed it is while it's running. Uh, keep track of progress. So I'm gonna say if if the if the div division remainder, um, just rem here, that's just the remainder when you do a division. When we divide i by a um, hundred, if this is equal to zero, um, remember to end this. So if the if the if we divide i by a hundred and the remainder is zero, we're just going to print. 
i divided by uh, run num. And so basically every hundredth iteration, this is just going to print out like what percentage complete we are. And you guys don't even need this. You guys could just ignore this or whatever, just skip over it. But this is just going to allow us to see like the progress and like how quickly our for loop is running. So while we're running, because it might take kind of a long time, we want to see, um, make sure it's like making progress and kind of getting things done. Um, okay, so now for each one of these iterations, we want to um, guess a new parameter set to try out. So basically, we're just going to say param test equals, I'm um, just going to make this array to store like both of these parameters here. And now for, for our guess for R, um, we're just going to say um, it's going to be a random um uniform distribution ranging from let's just say zero to two basically this is going to be our guess for the uh the growth rate r um again this is the great thing about mcmc is that you guys can actually make it whatever prior distribution you want to so if you had some guess about what you thought the growth rate might be you could make this like instead of just a uniform distribution you could make it like a normal distribution around some guess that you have or any kind of other distribution. But I'm gonna say for now that we don't really have any information except that we're, we're guessing that it's some value between zero and two. But we're just gonna say between zero and two, all of those values are equally likely. So our prior is just a, a uniform distribution between zero and two. But again, in, in, in a real life context, you guys might have like a better guess that you could make like some kind of actual like normal distribution or something um, around some guess that you have. But yeah, so this is going to be our guess for um, R. And then, oh, whoops, I need a, actually a semicolon rather than a comma here. And then for, um, for our uh, carrying capacity parameter, our guess is going to be a random distribution. Um, I mean, sorry, random, uh, normal, sorry, not, not normal, uniform distribution um, ranging from 0 to um, 10,000. Again, I'm just trying to show you guys that even though we can kind of see what it is visually, I'm trying to show you guys that even if we like don't take the easy way out, we can actually um, we can actually like have this method work even if we don't tell it what the correct carrying capacity is. We can have it actually get there by itself just by uh, just by the method actually working. Um, okay, so for each for each um, iteration, this is our guess for the parameters. You guys may also see different methods of doing the guesses differently. For example, you may see another method called um, Gibbs sampling, where you where you change the uh, parameter guesses like one at a time, like for each one. Instead of changing both of them, you keep the previous guess for one of them and change the other. Um, that's something called uh, called Gibbs sampling. But for now, I'm just kind of like kind of making this as simple as possible. Just for each one, generate. Um, generate a new like random guess for both of them. Okay, and then for this for this guess of the parameter set, we're going to um, generate um, generate the uh, log, log, log likelihood school for it. So we're just gonna call this log likelihood um, LL test equals LL function, um, passing in the experimental data and uh, our test parameters. It's called param test here. So again, this is just generating like a, uh, a a new parameter set guess, and then the log likelihood score for this guess. So now what we need to do is this thing. Um, I'm going to do this thing called the uh, Metropolis um, Hastings algorithm. Uh, the idea with the Metropolis Hastings algorithm is basically that if if our um, if our log likelihood score is better than the most recent saved log likelihood score that we have. If it's better than that last saved score, we're going to um, definitely accept this parameter set and save it. Uh, but even if it's even if it's worse, we're going to um, we're going to basically like roll the dice and and give it some like random probability of still being saved anyway, just so that we can um, kind of keep exploring around the parameter space and sort of keeping some level of uncertainty um, within our uh, choice of um, which parameters we're accepting. We're incorporating some uncertainty uh, into that even. So basically, if if the log likelihood score is, is better than the most recent saved one, we definitely we definitely save these new parameters. But even if it's worse, then we still, with some random chance, 
we still may end up saving it. And the way we're going to actually implement this is we're going to say if ll test equals, sorry, not equals, um, if it's uh, greater than or equal to um, the, whoops, log likelihood set. Remember, this is where we're saving all of our um, accepted log likelihoods, uh, all these uh, all these log likelihood scores. We're going to get out of this the most recent element that we saved. So basically, um, if we just if we just left the if statement like this, basically this would be um, this would evaluate as true if the um, if our most recent log likelihood score was uh, as good or better than our most recent saved log likelihood. But we want it to um, with some probability still accept the parameters even if the new log likelihood score isn't as good. So we're going to add a term to this and basically say plus, um, and again, there's going to be a bit of confusing math here, but we're going to say plus um, log, uh, the, the natural log of a random, uh, random uniform distribution um, between zero and one. So basically, this is saying um, we just take take a random number between zero and one, and then take the uh, natural log of it. And so basically, this is going to give us some negative number. And just so you guys believe me, I'll just actually like evaluate this, evaluate a couple times here. It's basically just giving giving us like some um, some random number. So basically, this even though we have a plus, this is going to be decreasing. The, um, this save log likelihood score by some amount, uh, some random amount that we're choosing. We're gonna, we're gonna decrease this like most recent save log likelihood score. So we're basically gonna be like, by some random amount, we're gonna be like lowering the bar that this um, new log likelihood score has to meet in order for these parameters to get saved. So basically, um, even, if the new, uh, even if the new log likelihood score isn't as good as our most recent saved log likelihood score, there's going to be some like probability that we're still going to accept the parameters anyway. So basically, if this value if this evaluates is true, we're going to say um, we're going to say log log likelihood set equals um, log likelihood set, and we're going to append the um, the new score that we have here. Uh, yeah, basically just appending this new log, log, log likelihood score um, to this log likelihood, log, sorry, I can't talk, but uh, log likelihood score um, set that we're saving here. Um, we're going to do the same thing for the uh, parameter set that we're keeping track of. Sorry, paraset equals um, paraset appending uh, param test. And then uh, just doing the same thing for all guesses all guesses too. So yeah, basically, if we're accepting if we're accepting these um, this new parameter set, we save the log likelihood score, we save the parameter set, and we also record um, we record the parameter set in our like list of all the guesses too. Remember, the all guesses list is keeping track of even the parameter sets that are going to be rejected. Um, okay, so what about if we what about if we um, if this evaluates to false? Then what do we do? So we're going to say else. Basically, in this case, we're going to update all of these again. So I'm actually just going to copy and paste this block of code here. But then for these two, instead of saving the new values, it's just going to still save. Um, it's going to still save like the the previous value basically. So we're going to still save this like value at the end. Same thing with the paraset. Whoops. Uh, so basically what we're saying here is that we're, we're not accepting this new value. We're just saving like the previous value that was already recorded here. We're just depending that previous value um, again. Yeah. But then, but then for all guesses, remember all guesses, we want to update this one even with the rejected, um, even with the rejected parameters. We still update to save the rejected parameters into the all guesses. Um, okay, yeah, so this is basically all we need. Um, we're just, again, iterating through, uh, we're basically just like iterating through this like a million times 
and each of these iterations, we're choosing a new guess for the parameter for the parameter set, and we're computing a um, log likelihood score for that uh, new parameter guess. And then we're seeing how well the um, log likelihood score compares to the previously saved log likelihood score. And if it's better than the previously saved log, log, log likelihood score, then we definitely save this uh, new parameter set. But even if it's worse, there's still some probability of it getting saved anyway, just so we can incorporate some uncertainty into like which parameters we're uh, saving. And we, we want to save all the guesses, even for the parameter sets they're rejected to. Um, okay, so that's basically it. That's basically all we need for the, um, for the Markov chain Mo Monte Carlo uh, method. And the last thing we're going to do is actually like plot our uh, posterior distributions to get some idea of like what we're ending up with here for our parameter guesses. So we're just going to make some section here called um, plots. And again, going to be a little bit lazy here. Just going to um, just going to copy and paste some code in uh, just to save a bit of time. Um, I'll kind of explain what the, what the plots are doing, but yeah, it's gonna be a little bit lazy here and copy and paste some of this in. Yeah, so basically we're just making one figure to plot our um, R parameter distribution. So we're gonna plot the po the prior distribution, which remember we're saving. Um, since we're saving all of our guesses, they're just being sampled from the from the prior distribution. We're really just plotting a histogram of all of our parameter guesses, and then we're also plotting a parameter. We're also plotting a, a distribution of our saved parameters, which is going to be our um, posterior distribution. And you guys are going to see what this ends up uh, looking like. And then we want to do also the same thing for our uh, K carrying capacity parameter. We're just going to plot um, one histogram of our prior distribution and then another histogram of our posterior uh, distribution. Okay, so I'm just going to run this code. Um, hopefully it works okay. We're going to see when the uh, plots come out, if it if it hopefully turned out to be okay. So, um, fingers crossed that this, uh, that this actually works. Oh, maybe I'll save it first. Um, but okay, yeah, let's give it a shot. Um, okay, we got, wait, okay, we got some, some error here. Sorry, guys, give me like one second to figure out this error here. Um, okay guys, sorry about that. Um, I just had like two bugs I had to fix to get it to work. Um, so the first one was that I just forgot this end statement at the end of this like if else uh, statement. So just, um, yeah, I just went back and put this end statement in here. Again, sorry about that uh, clumsy mistake. I'm just not really used to MATLAB, so just kind of just get forgetful with that sometimes. But yeah, just added that in. And then I also had a typo that I had to fix up here. So, um... I had put, I don't know if anyone, if, if any of you guys caught this, I'll be impressed, but maybe caught it while I was typing it. I put param zero here. It should be params with an S, params zero. So I just had to fix that uh, typo there. But yeah, it should be, that was that was the one bug. And then the other bug, um, just this end statement at the end of this uh, if else. Um, but okay, so I think it should be running fine now. So I'm going to uh, to run it and then we'll check out the results. Yeah, so remember this thing it's printing here is just our progress. So remember we printed out, um, basically every 100 iterations we're printing out like the percent complete it is. Um, you guys can probably see it's, it's going pretty slowly. That's partly because I'm just using, um, I'm like, re I'm recording a video of this. I'm doing like the screen capture video. That's making it go a little bit slower than usual, but even even if I wasn't like recording the screen, it would still be going um, pretty slowly. So at this point, I think I'm probably just going to um, cut the video, and then um, I'll I'll just skip towards the end when it's complete, and then and then we'll uh, discuss the results. Um, okay, guys. So now we have a result. Um, you guys probably can't tell on your end because I cut the video, but this actually did take a pretty long time to run. It actually took a couple hours. So I'm going to recommend to you guys as like a general like best practice. Um, before you run this thing for like a million iterations, run it for like a hundred or like a thousand first so that you can like check and see if there's any bugs. Because really the worst thing ever in programming is when you have something like that's running that takes like um, 
hours or like days to run and then at the very end instead of like outputting a result you get some like bug at the end that you didn't realize was going to be there so yeah you don't want to have that happen so i just recommend to you guys um like run it for like a hundred iterations first before going for a million just to like check and make sure everything's working um but yeah so now we have a result um so there's actually two figures here so we have um the, the first figure is our um prior and posterior distributions for our uh r parameter remember r is the um growth growth rate parameter so um the prior is what we uh programmed it to be just a, a uniform distribution between zero and two um like i said before if you guys if you're doing this in a real life context if you know some like prior information about what you're expecting a parameter to be you can make the prior um anything you want it to be you can like include some information about like what you're expecting but then our posterior and remember the posterior distribution is the distribution of accepted parameter sets um that are accepted uh based on this um metropolis uh hastings uh method um this is our distribution of all of the accepted parameter sets and we can see for the posterior, it kind of clusters around 0 0.2. Um, and then so we have the same thing for our uh, K parameter. Remember, K is the carrying capacity. So our prior distribution um, is what we programmed it to be. It's a uniform distribution between 0 and 10,000. And our posterior distribution, um, it kind of clusters around 2,000, which we can kind of already see visually that this is going to be what it is. But we made it um, we made it like more difficult than it had to be for the uh, algorithm to like check and make sure it can actually find the right answer on its own. So we just started with a uh, uniform distribution between zero and ten thousand, and then it looks like it got it right. If we wanted to get some like actual numbers out of these distributions, we could actually um, do things like compute like confidence intervals. So I'll show you guys. Um, let's just say we wanted to get like the ninety-five percent confidence interval for our uh, posterior of um, our R distribution. This is how we do that. We'd say like paraset. Um, we want the uh, the the first row, which is going to be all of um, all of the uh, all 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 of the R values, and then we just want the percentile at uh, the two point five percentile, the fiftieth, and then the uh, 97.5 percentile. This will give us something like a, uh, a 95 percent confidence interval for this um, posterior distribution. Yeah, and just like we expected, it kind of centers around 0 0.2 and we have, we could put like error bars on it if we wanted to. We could do the same thing for um, our, our K parameter. Uh, let's do the same thing there. Um, again, it's not exactly 2,000, but it centers, um, centers around like 1,000 uh, 990 and i mean this is this is like being scaled here so these are all in the thousands uh so yeah kind of centers centers like pretty close to like 2000 um not exactly but we could put error bars on on this uh, posterior here um okay so now for the moment of truth now i'm going to show you guys the code i used to generate this um this like mock data set and i'm going to show you guys what values i uh, actually used to generate this like this noisy data set so here's the code I used in Python to generate the uh, stochastic data. And yeah, so like you guys are probably expecting, I set R to be 0 0.2 and K to be 2000. So we can see that, yeah, like our, our uh, MCMC um, parameter estimation um, came pretty close to getting it right. It's not 100% not exact, but, uh, you know, came pretty close to getting it right. Um, so yeah, we were able to successfully um, recover these parameters that were used to generate this stochastic data. Um, in real life, it's not going to be this easy. I kind of made this data set like easy on purpose just because I want to have something like easy to teach you guys on. But in real life, it probably is not going to be this easy to get like such a perfect answer and just recover uh, the parameters like so easily. But um I hope this video has given you guys some at least like starting point to be able to apply this to like real data sets. Yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, just let me know in the comments. And I'll try to answer them. Uh, like usual, all my code will be on my GitHub, including like the actual um, fake data set and all of that stuff, as well as the code I use to generate the fake data. Uh, that'll all be on my GitHub and the link to the GitHub will be in the description.
Also, just again, I'm making this video because of a, a request from a viewer. So I really like when you guys um, request topics you want to hear about. And if, if it's something I'm knowledgeable on, I do try to like make videos in response to stuff you guys request to hear about. So if there's anything you guys want to hear about, you can like leave a comment or send me an email or uh, something like that. Just um, let me know and I'll try to, uh, to cover it if I'm knowledgeable enough about it. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, thanks for watching and, uh, see you next time.